Okay. Uh, my pr my preference is for you guys to post things in my Dropbox folder. Is there anybody who doesn't know how to do that? Let me put this message here. Does anybody, anyone not know how to post to my instructor drop box? Because if the answer is yes to that, and I, ha I have to show you, I'm happy to show you. Right? Do so we do it through the VDI desktop? Huh? Do we submit them through the VDI desktop? My Dropbox folder. You connect to the network. Yeah, you use VDI, I think, uh, if you're at home. You use VDI. I have it also, yeah. I think that's why um, mine didn't go through. So I'll fix that. What do you mean that's why yours didn't go through? Did you try to email them or you 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 tried to connect to the VDI and you couldn't get in? I think I just submitted them um, incorrectly and I'm realizing my mistake now. Okay, guys, uh, there's when I ask questions, there's usually yes or no answers to them, right? So it, I, I'm very anxious to help you with something if I can, but I have to know what what I'm helping you with. So let me ask the question again. Is there anybody who doesn't know how to log in to the Suffolk network? Call it whatever you want. VDI, VDI, uh, the VMware allows you to connect to the network, right? That's the software we use to connect to the network. Then you navigate over to folders and I have an instructor Dropbox with my name on it. Is there anybody who doesn't know that how to do that? Because if you don't, I have to show you, it's not a big deal. I don't mind showing you, but we need to get that housekeeping out of the way, All right? So take a minute and think about it. If the answer is yes to that, I'll, sh I'll show you how it works. Right? And if, if I don't get an answer, that means everybody knows how to put something in my Dropbox, right? Now, the only reason I ask you for drawing, it's not a big deal if you ignored it or you had trouble with it or, you know, whatever. I, it's a luxury to have something to respond to. So I can use some of your drawings to see sort of, you know, troubled things that were having trouble with and, and respond to them. Then I have, you know, some other exercises that I want to show you today that are going to help with this, right? Uh, all right, let me just take a 10, to, let me just uh, see that everybody's here. Em, Emma, is Emma here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, uh, are you the woman who's uh, couldn't get into my class and now Am I wrong about that? I'm no, sorry. yeah, that's me. That's you. Okay, so yeah. were you able to register yet? Um, I don't think I'm like fully registered. I haven't checked today, but I can see if I am. Okay, no big deal. I'm glad that you're here today. Were you able to watch the recording of the last class? Um, no, I didn't get to. Is there anybody else here who was unable to register for the class that, that need, was on the waiting list or needs to get in. I don't think so. I think that was the only case, right? All right. Um, so what I want to do today, and I'll look at some point, uh, I will, uh review some of the, the work you submitted that's in progress and i'll show you a little more closely then i have some examples of some physical work that students have done now what i'd like to do is prepare some of the study drawings right so um what do i mean by study drawing we're going to look at the parts 
of that visual ex exercise. Let me, sh let me share my screen. I think I can do that. So everybody knows how to get a drawing to me. My strong preference, post them in my Dropbox, right? Because more often than not, uh, if the file is too big, it'll it'll never survive the email, and e that's not what the. I know I realize I asked you to email me the drawings, and that that was a mistake. But email your drawings aren't always going to survive the email, and especially when they're big drawings. Uh, anyway, uh, for the rest of the semester, I'm going to have a Dropbox folder set up for each of the folios that I need from you guys. And that's where I'll be collecting the work and grading it, reviewing it. We'll be pinning up together in class as well, because it, it's nice to be able to see what everybody else is doing. So let me see if I can get, oh no, it's not a matter of sharing screen, is it? It's a matter of, changing the camera. to this thing. Okay, so these are my hands. These are all right. Dynamite. So I, uh, for those of you who did manage to get me drawings, I printed some of them out. But I want to start with a with a with a fresh exercise today. Uh, Okay, so I have spotlighted my video for everybody. Can everybody see my right hand with a stupid uh, ring on it, rings on it, and my left hand with nothing on it has a trace paper. Everybody see that? You don't all have to answer it. Just yeah. let me, okay, dynamite. Um, we're gonna look at parts, right? Now, I, 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 I had told you guys early on, you can use whatever drawing instrument you you want uh, for for this. And you may want to work on some drawing paper. If you have a notebook, which I strongly recommend, I'll show you my notebook because I love showing my notebook. It's gonna be on display in the uh in the faculty exhibit so you can say hey that's my notebook my notebooks instruct no that's my instructor's notebook right so i did a lot of drawing over the over the pandemic right so these are these are some drawings of mine that I went around the neighborhood over here with a mask. So it's nice to sort of collect. Anybody know the Carpenter Center over at Harvard? Right, you have a neat little book like this, graffiti. I love when people write on buildings. Okay, so here's an example of something I'm studying and I'm looking at the parts. You see this, see these drawings? So we're gonna look at what we need to learn about to make a draw. I'm sorry, I thought I had more of those. I guess I don't. Never mind. Okay. By now I've rehearsed this lots of times, right? So what I expect you guys to do, don't 
worry about making mistakes. Whatever you do here, you can make mistakes, you can scribble. It really doesn't matter. This camera thing is gonna drive me nuts. It's gonna focus in and out every time I move. I thought I'd stop doing that. So what I want us to be able to do quickly at some point is to be able to draw something. I'm gonna draw orthographically, right? A base of a column. Does everybody understand what I'm drawing here? If I were looking at, at this, this column, a plan view, right? I'd be looking at something that had a bunch of circles inscribed in it, cutting through it. So I'm looking at this drawing, right? I cut a section, I'm looking in down. A, A, stop me if you don't understand what I'm, what I'm saying, right? I'm, I'm creating a drawing that looks like, this is section A, A, or drawing A, A, right? Now, in order to create this projection, I have to inscribe an ellipse into that base. So what was missing from many of your, your, your drawings is sort of is a, a treatment of that. So when I When I put together this study, it was for the purposes of explaining the geometry that underlies what you're looking at, right? So the, the drawing that I'm creating right now, let me see, I, I think I need my light table for this. You don't need a light table, don't panic. Don't worry that you haven't got one, but for Zoom, illustration purposes, I may need to do something like this. So I'm going to explain what it is that I'm looking at. Remember, I mentioned this is sort of pers perspective with, with training wheels of sorts, right? So when if I ask you to study this part of the, the drawing, You can do it with trace if, if you like, but to understand it, but my, my preference, so I'm using trace paper to explain what I'm drawing, right? This is perspective, so it's gonna be the, the rectangle is not gonna be, um, axonometric, it's going to be foreshortened. In other words, as as I move in that direction, it's going to be smaller and back. Everybody understands this is um, uh, axonometric, axonometric. So every axis gets equal weight. They're also called paraline drawing, paraline drawings. So if I draw the X, the Y, and the Z coordinate, right? Every one of these ticks, gets equal weight. Hang in there. I know I'm boring you to tears, but there, there's, there's a reason I need to explain it. So if this is three units long and this is three units deep, now I haven't drawn it very well. But that, that is a, a parallel a projection. This is perspective. Uh, 
Okay, so what that means uh, is the lines that form the parallel edges of that converge to a vanishing point in perspective. Right? So this line is a little shorter than this one. And the ellipse that's inscribed in here is slightly at an angle. When I'm drawing a, a parallel drawing, that ellipse is straight up and down. So the major and minor axis of that ellipse is straight in parallel projection. Okay. How do we rehear how do we set up now how do we set up a study that we can easily go from here to this sort of thing or for any geometry for that matter and that's what I intend to show you now. So the exercise we're going to do, you don't need to do this on trace. It's actually kind of a waste of trace paper to do this on trace because you, you we don't need to draw that on trace paper. But what I'd like you to do, what we're going to do is what's called a skeletal, skeletal letter alphabet. Skeletal letter drawings. And what this is, is a warm-up exercise of how I can easily get from here to to that sort of thing. So what I'd like you to do is make as carefully as possible without using a straight edge, a set of rectangular, a contiguous rectangular shapes. If you use a pencil, a pen, it doesn't matter. But let's imagine You're trying to make as carefully as possible a series of rectangles that are all the same size. They may be a little bit taller than wide. Again, without using a straight edge, without using a ruler, we're trying to get them to be about the same size. As you're drawing, it makes sense to respond to some elements you've already drawn. 
makes it a little bit easier. I need, I need to put this on a different screen. I'm sorry, I just saw that the message in my, Isabel, I take it you, do, you don't know how to use the Dropbox, is that correct? Can you guys hear me? You do know how to do the Dropbox. Okay, good, okay. I thought that meant you didn't, good. Uh, this isn't better on that monitor than this one. So I'm going to go to another one. Try to keep the lines orthogonal straight up and down. Don't worry about making mistakes with it. And then what I want you to begin to construct or a series of skeletal letters. Imagine that you're dividing these rectangles into parts. If I'm drawing the letter B as in baby, I'll divide it in, in half vertically and do something like this, right? There might be some half circles If you need some guidance in inscribing a circle in a rectangle, one way to do it, or, or a circle or elliptical shape, is to divide it evenly into parts like this. And then identifying the points where the shape meets, touches the rectangle. So these are tangents. So the curve whatever that shape is, is tangent to the midpoint of those edges. Any questions about what I'm asking you guys to do? Can I get some feedback on, am I crazy? Do, you, do we understand this? I understand. Great, because it's gonna get it's gonna get progressively harder, but there's a reason for this. Has anybody done this before? Do you know who Joseph Albers is? You ever hear of a guy named Joseph Albers? If you haven't, yes. yeah, let's find let's find out about people you should know. You guys are cool people, right? Everybody agrees, right? You guys are the coolest people at Suffolk University, because why? You're artists. You've chosen an artistic endeavor, a design endeavor in the best possible field to be in is architectural design, because it brings together art and music and all, all the stuff, all those sensibilities that you 
bring together in, in design. And it begins with understanding the geometry. Well, let me give you a little bit of background on how I vicariously came to know Joseph Albert. My drawing instructor in college was a student of his. So he studied uh, drawing and painting at Yale uh, University in the 50s. And he had as a drawing instructor, Joseph Albers. And I have a little, I have a little uh, rare uh, video snippet of Joseph Albers teaching, but what, Okay, so the way Joseph Albers explained, who also did, by the way, does anybody know the famous book that he wrote that everybody knows about? Anybody tell me? Interaction. Of color, right? He also wrote this book that's out of print. There were a series of lectures that he gave at Trinity College in the 60s, but they also have illustrations of drawing problems. So where are we going with the skeletal letters? We're going here with this. You're looking at this and what the heck is he talking about? I'll show you in a little while. But these are drawing exercises. And the, those, the, these are color studies that he did with, with paper on top of colored paper. You may have, have done uh, drawings like this in your foundations classes. Right? There's some stuff we won't have time to do. So those are ellipses and different shapes. There's a lowercase letter E in a Bodoni alphabet. And we'll, we'll see how to do that. We'll come, come back to that at some point. Anyways, Joseph Albers taught my instructor, Will Ryman, And he taught Sandro. And I'm teaching IDC 2022. So you guys have this incredibly powerful connection to Joseph Albers. It doesn't, it maybe doesn't mean much to you right now, but as you start to understand how we are understanding the, the, the visual aspects of what we're seeing, it'll, it'll all make sense to you. So what he taught people to do was to see. Okay. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to make you guys regret that you chose this section. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't panic. These exercises are things that I actually think, believe that you will enjoy. So as soon as you start enjoying the work, you can type in the chat, hey, Sandro, I'm having fun. You can, you can type something like that if you feel like it. All right. I won't be offended if you don't. Oh, that's my nose. Wow. That's the back of my head. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. 
some letters uh, present an interesting challenge, right? Um, I'm going to switch to pen. My favorite drawing instrument is usually a pen, right? Under, under normal circumstances, I would spend an entire class just drawing rectangles. Okay, but we're, we don't have that luxury just now. Uh, do as much of the alphabet as you can, but make sure that you include at least uh, several cursive letters. If you decide that for these to be squares, that's that's fine as well. That means it's somehow you can divide the rectangle up into four smaller perfect squares, right? And then the shape, you should be able to inscribe a circle in there by creating three quarter rounds. You'd be surprised how close you can get to a circular shape. How many people have both? Are up to the letter G. How many people are up to letter G? You can skip ahead, dynamite. You can skip ahead if you want. Go. What other let letter is cursive? Well, Q presents a strange problem if you want to include it in this shape. What letter do you think we're going to have a really tough time with? Anybody guess what the most difficult letter is going to be? I call it the Superman problem. Very good. Yeah. When I was a kid, uh, all right, let me look it up on the internet. This is how I knew I wanted to draw when I was little. So those of you who've sent drawings, uh, I appreciate that. I, I'm going to get, I'll get to them. Uh, the Superman logo. I'm going to share a different screen for a minute, I think. I want to make sure that nothing crashes. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is print this and show it to you guys. Well, let me share this screen very quickly and I'll, I'll explain what I'm talking about. 
Does everybody see the Superman logo on the screen? Yes. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when I when I was a kid, I when I when I saw this thing, I didn't really I didn't really see the letter S straight away. But what I saw was these shapes that are in yellow. Oh, how convenient. I happen to be wearing yellow and red today, or more or less. So I saw these shapes and I was obsessed with trying to draw those shapes in between, right? And uh, sometime later, right? I mean, I didn't grow up all that much, but I, I figured out that um, what I was seeing was actually the, you know, the negative spaces in between the letters. So let me, let me try to explain what it is that we're looking at when we look at something like a letter S. When I look at the letter S, I'm looking at um, two overlapping ellipses. Do you see how by just drawing those two shapes, I almost can make out the form of that letter? Give that a try. It's really cool. So like, how, how do I draw the letter S and make it look like I know what I'm doing? That you draw one ellipse, another ellipse, and they overlap. Inside there, I mean, I've, I've skipped ahead to a, a different type of a problem. The skeletal, skeletal, skeletal letter S is a, a little bit different than that, right? Um, I want to take those ellipses. Maybe they're a little bit smaller. And what I want to do is negotiate the beginning of that curve and then blend into the 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 second of these. So do you do you see what I'm doing in order to so that there's some continuity. Between those two parts. In a perfect world, you practice making ellipses. And I would would recommend that you do that one after the other, fill an entire page with it. The better, the more you, of these that you draw, the better you get at it, right? Th this is actually a different version of the letter, which I wanna bring up uh, separately. So let me make some room. Boy, this is really gonna drive me nuts. Okay. Once you, you've got to the point where you have bo both uh, linear letters, then I want you to take those rectangles and, and do this. and bend them 
not in perspective. but in a series of, of parallel drawings, parallel rectangles, right? So each one of these wants to be the same as the one before, just like you did here. It's really important that you try to maintain this, the relationship. These ought to be the same size, right? So you want to get some kind of control over these shapes so that you're making shapes that are identical before you begin the letters. How do I find the midpoint of these lines. What's an easy way to find the midpoint? Of the edges of that rectangle, somebody guess. If I'm just if I just have a pencil and I'm drawing. You understand the question, right? I'm trying to find the middle of those lines. So as, as part of your study, you wanna do this sort of, exercise, make those rectangles and see what you can do about identifying the intersection, right, of those points. So if it's a cursive letter, those are gonna be the points of tangencies. And the answer to the question is you draw the diagonals. And I apologize for doing this in, in this uh, format. Um, I usually use a board, a chalkboard to explain these exercises. It's a lot more fun exercise that we can do in person. So why, why is that important? Because when I draw these shapes, and I want to project these letters onto these um, oblique. Everybody know what the word oblique means? Slanted. Yeah. Oblique is a wonderful word. Oblique is not, uh, more, maybe commonly applied to letter forms. So it means italic when it's applied to letter forms, when it's applied to um, English, like a reference, an oblique reference, that means that you have an indirect reference to something, a sidelong or slanted, as you said, reference to something. So really wonderful word, oblique. You're going to use words like that because you guys are cool. So these are oblique projections. 
So in order to draw the letter A, I need to identify the midpoint there because this line is going to be a different length than that one. Then across There's a different drawing problem you're going to bring up with the <coughs> with the cursive letter forms, but we'll 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 get there in a minute. If I'm drawing the letter O. And if you don't like what's happening with your drawing, just draw another one. You know what? I don't like that the way I've drawn the letter O. I'm going to try a perfectly square projection and see if that works a little bit better for me. But here's the point. I want to understand the oblique projection of that letter form as a projection of those curves. So if I were to take the letter in, in its entirety, I don't expect you to be able to do this straight away. You can try if you like, right? If I were to do this Right, because I, I, I know, I understand that the ellipse is going to be a flat ellipse with a major and minor axis. By the way, when I say major and minor axis, when I talk about that, when I discuss, when I talk about an ellipse, I'm talking about major. minor axes. The, the, minor, the minor one is shorter than the major. So it's, it's wider than it is uh, tall. So the, the, you know, the shape that lives in here is elliptical like that. Now, if I were to look at the parts of this and say I just wanted to draw one, two, three, and four. Look at the difference between one and two. Do you see how ha what happens with one? The curve is going out this way. But with two, it has to come back. Right, so it's kind of severely, and what and what what we're trying to understand here is the shape of that space. This is called the the spandrel.
What happens to three and four? What is number three going to be the mirror image of? What is it going to look like? Is it going to look like one or four or two? One. Well, think about three. this. No, well, number. I'm asking what number three. I guess it wasn't fair to ask to include those other uh, choices in there. Number three is going to be a mirror image of this, right? Because it has to come back pretty severely. So that that spandrel is going to look like number two. Number four, on the other hand, is going to look a lot like one, only reverse, because I I'm, I'm going out and doing this. Remember, these points are the, the tangents. I know I'm breaking it apart into pieces. Now, you can do that. By drawing that shape inside the curve and knowing that that shape has to touch all four sides of that. It's not hard, it's not easy to do you guys. So don't beat yourself up about it. But the projection, you, you have to identify first, you have to identify the, the midpoints. So you need parallel lines that, cross, that uh, intersect, the diagonals intersect and the parallel lines go through them. Then those form the tangents. And your lips I'm doing a dreadful job of it, but that's okay. Has to meet those points. If I were drawing an electric range, why am I drawing an electric range and not a gas range? Can anybody tell me? That's a trick question. It's a little bit of a trick question, but why, why is my preference gas versus electric? Which one would you draw? They're similar, right? If I look at them from the top, they probably have burners. Okay. This is sustainable. So if you continue with interior design, you're gonna have me for environmental systems and we're gonna talk about sustainable alternatives. So we are, we're trying to wean ourselves away from fossil fuels like natural gas so that we can uh, do something about the climate change crisis. Anyway, 
So if I wanted to draw that stovetop after I understood all this, right? How would I draw that to make it look uh, convincing? That means these become ellipses. Right, whose major and minor axes are up and down. Does everybody see what I'm doing there? How I go from here to there? Finally, how do I go from this is going to drive me crazy. Focus locked. I hope that focus is locked. Okay. How do I go from here to some study of it, of this part that demonstrates my understanding about how all this stuff works? I do it like this. Because I I already did my 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 skeletal alphabet. I understand that that there's an ellipse there's an ellipse shape in there, but these are a series of concentric ellipses. These are concentric. So there's one after the other. There may be, some may be closer together than others. I'm gonna butcher this drawing, but I'm, I'm explaining and right. So the, the base is the base. That's easy peasy, right? We know how to do the rectangle because we understand how these things work. We understand how the letter A gets, gets projected. We understand how the rectangle is transformed into an oblique. So the, what I'm looking at here is an oblique representation, right? Of, if you think of it, the letter O, right? Maybe my, my base is a little big. And then what I understand about it, I actually reverse this, right? I'm looking the other way, but it doesn't matter. I could have done it either, either way, right? So if, if that, that is my base, then I'm looking at these parts, right? Those are the edges. This is what's missing from many of your drawings. So I'm, I'm, and no, the, hey, don't take this as a criticism. Like Alyssa, the question was, it's flat. What, what is what flat? Oh no, that was for something else. I thought you were saying um, it was easier to draw an electric because it's flat and the gas like lifts oh, up. I'm sorry, dear. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was that wasn't fair of me to to interrogate you guys about what what's the what's the difference between gas and electric, right? I I clearly and demonstrate. I'm an architect. I I build. I try to build responsibly and make. Um, responsible decisions that are environment friendly. So that's that's all I meant by what the difference is between the two. From the point of view of the burners, it really doesn't matter, right? So let's, let's look at this thing a little more. 
carefully, right? So if you draw lightly and then go in and emphasize the put, so th this is what I want you guys to, to be seeing, right? There's somewhere here, there's something disappears behind something else. Right, and the degree to which you can control the rate at which these disappear, that's what we're looking at. And that's what I'm looking for in your drawings. Okay, I won't, I won't attach names to these, but here's one or two of the things that I was able to print out. I, this is wonderful. These are exquisite. First of all, I wanna say that everyone has done a fine job at, um, understanding the problem, right? How do I get from here to something like this, right? And then finally, well, let me show you. Here are what my students have done with these drawings. This, and this is really nice paper. Why would you use really nice paper? Because you might do something that you're really, really happy with, right? So how do we make these drawings? We're, we're, we're using, our understanding of this to scaffold this. And so you want to keep these very light. So whoever's drawing this is, this is, this is a great start because it's very light and then we can go in and work in, right? The parts, but what's missing, right? And you can, having done this, right? Having done all, little exercises that I asked us to do, we can see pretty quickly that what's missing from these drawings and look how beautiful it becomes just by understanding that this is what's going on. That's what I'm looking at. Everybody see what I'm doing here? Okay, and what happens at the top? The reverse, right? I, here is my horizon. There's my, my vanishing point is over here somewhere. So somehow, These form the edges of, in this case, the base, in this case, the capital. And I'm looking at the letter O. Think of it as it's the letter O, right? In two minutes, I went from this to this. That doesn't mean that you have to be literal about every single part.
but you need enough of it to suggest that there's some curvature. Does everybody understand how this problem is the same as this problem? It's a visual, it's visually, it's understanding what I'm looking at here that allows me to generate an abbreviated re representation of this, right? That later allows me to go in and create a line drawing like that. Okay. This is not supposed to be a class where I lecture the whole time or spend all that time in, in, in a perfect world. We'd be in the classroom. We will next week. Um, so I'd like you I, I think you understand this exercise. This afternoon, we're gonna look a little more closely at some variations of this, but I want, most of all, I want you guys to understand how I'm getting from here, right? How I'm acquiring an understand, a visual understanding of the, the basis in geometry of what I'm looking at and applying it to my drawing. That's what interior, that's what, spatial communication is about. And that's what I hope that you guys will acquire, right? I'm gonna, ta I'm gonna take a little bit of a, a break. Uh, you guys, you know, continue to work on that. If anybody wants to show me something, if you have the means to scan something and put it on, uh, the 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 screen or or hold it up to the camera or something whatever you want to do somehow or other uh, to show me something and um, first of all are there, are there any any questions does everybody understand what I'm asking for you guys the the understanding I'm asking you guys to acquire. Uh, I'll yeah, yeah, I'll take that you're quite, if, if, if there's some ob objection or some issue with what, what I have, please jump up and say, Sandra, what the hell are you talking about? Explain. But I, there's, a, there's a connection that we need to understand that where all of this, what we're seeing has a basis in understanding this. And the reason we, I use letter forms it's a very habitual mark, something that we learned to do when we were very little. We never thought about it, right? So all we're taking is a, a, a transformation of that. I'll leave this up on the screen. I will pause the re recording and be back in the 10 minutes and we'll, uh, we'll try to look at something if there's if anyone has something to show me, okay? So um, I just realized I wasn't writing to everybody when I wrote last. Um, If anyone has something they'd like to share with me, I realize there's a not much time left. So maybe what we can do is, um, for those of you who haven't done that, post to my, uh, to my drop folder 
anything you'd like me to review. in class and I'm going to uh, make sure that I have a folder for this class set up. Yeah, I have a folder called, and here's the name of the folder. That letter R doesn't mean anything, but that's that's the Dropbox folder. It would be my name, instructor Dropbox is my name, that folder, right? And you can put, Posts of, oh, it looks like there's stuff in there. What's in there? Somebody posted something. If you, if you post something in there, please use your name in the file name so that I know uh, whose work I'm looking at. So there are four drawings there, but I have no idea who posted them. Somebody want to claim them? Those are mine, but it wouldn't let me change the name. Oh yeah, once you post in there, so you have to re you, yeah. You you once you post something in the Dropbox folder, you can't modify it. So you would have to. Who said that? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Fabiola, that's you, or you're raising your hand. Uh, no, I'm Fabiola. I, I don't think I posted anything in it. They're mine. Alba. Alba. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. So now I know and I can rename them. And I'll look at them. Uh, we'll look at them this afternoon. Right? Everybody comfortable with what the uh, this assignment is? The more you do of this, the better the better you are. And I, I want to demonstrate to you that I think eventually I'd like to explain everything that we're looking here and the basis and its basis in geometry. So I'll see you guys this afternoon. Um, if anyone's got questions, uh, Ask, ask or po uh, post them, otherwise I will uh, end the, the meeting, okay? Yeah, I got Marley's email. Jamie, Tatiana. Okay, see you this afternoon. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank bye -bye. you. Yep.